All right, going to do it. Gonna build a steam engine. There, I said it. Um, where do I even start on this? This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the biggest project that has come from this channel so far. Uh, it's going to be building my dream steam engine hopefully 99% by myself in my own workshop with my own tools. That being said, I have bought the flywheel ready and I have bought these two pulleys. The flywheel because it's cast, I like the look of that and because it's just far too much trouble to machine all these spokes, machine the rim, fit them all together, solder them and then expecting it to run true. Um, this is virtually identical with the original number of spokes, outside diameter, inside diameter and so forth. Um, cost me 20 euros so I wasn't willing to take the hassle. We'll have to bore it out though and it's not an exact match because the inner ring here is slightly larger on the original we might machine it out if it doesn't look right, but if I'm going to do it, it's going to be the very last thing. Why buy the pulleys? Well, they have a very light knurling inside the running groove. You can maybe make it out, and um, for that I would have to make my own knurling tool, and I didn't feel like it. The rest of it is going to be parts I found on the street, literally, um, parts I have in my scrap drawer and um, part I, parts I bought from the scrapyard. Most of it is going to be brass, the rest is going to be steel and all brass parts will get nickel plated like these ones. A lot of extra effort but it has to look nice I think and uh, has to come close to the original. The original of this is a Dolph 362, you've seen it on, down there. Um, very expensive machine, back in the day, today even more so, because these are incredibly rare. I've seen a couple of them over the last 10 years maybe going over eBay for phenomenal prizes. It's just, I've put the machine off as a dream back then and uh, only recently when I started refurbishing my steam engines I thought, well, maybe it's time you build this machine on your own. Here's the parts list and the tooling. Um, you can see I've crossed stuff off it off already because I've started making this thing already. Um, I just wanted to have a lead for parts to be confidently able to say I'm going to be able to build this machine and I'm not just putting out empty promises uh, of making something which I can't achieve. We're going to focus on the machine itself first. If we can't get this thing running then there won't be any point in making the boiler housing. So um, this is also what this video is going to be about. I've not made any plans for the individual parts on here yet. And uh, that being said, I made all the drawings here by myself on a CAD program, uh, which is kindly offered for free when you're studying at university. So um, all I had was photos of the original machine. I knew the diameter of the flywheel and that was it. So I went ahead and grabbed a ruler and, you know, made it to look as close to the original as possible. What I started with, although it's not going to be the first video in the playlist, is the cylinder piston valve head assembly. It's the part where precision matters the absolute most. If the seals blow, if the uh, valve timing isn't right, the machine just isn't going to run. And it's by far one of the most complicated parts because it's so many individual parts so close together. It's going to get soldered from three main parts, namely the cylinder, 
the valve block and then the, well, shall we say, distribution pieces on the sides. On the original, this would all be one piece with a stamped piece of metal on the side, which is going to distribute the steam to either end. Um, that just looked like a whole lot of trouble for me, not getting it sealed tight, and uh, I decided to go this uh, safer route, be it more involving, but I think it's just uh, more secure to get a tight seal with this design. Also, on the original machine, the cylinder is quite a bit smaller and it has a metal cover around it to act as an insulator. I just made this whole thing solid, the end caps being the true end caps and not two metal spun pieces screwed onto the sides. Um, this is just easier for me to make and it's probably going to look better if I try it this way rather than the going the original path. Just to get you on the same page here, this is my Maclean steam engine. It's built up in exactly the same way. We have a screw holding everything together, then the metal spun end caps I was talking about, and then a piece of lining which is going to hide the much smaller actual piston. Noting the dimensions, you can see these parts are all pretty small. You can see here 1.5 mm, 3 mm, 3, 6, M2, 1 mm and so on. A um, whole lot of dimensions on very tiny parts. So you can imagine a lot of this is going to be done on my little Emco watchmaker's lathe. Um, some of these dimensions are of course not so important, especially when it comes to the base plate. Um, where many parts are just made to look good, like for example the uh, bearings. So for those I have printed out some templates which I'm just going to glue onto the stock, stock and then file it to shape. The base plate is going to be the most hogging work. Um, we're going to use two pieces which are square from the scarab yard, weld them together in the middle and uh, then machine the rest on the shaper. You can see it has these steps in here, the sides are slanted and uh, the underneaths are hollowed out. So it's going to be a substantial amount of work. And then you notice these parts here. On the original the base plate of course is cast. Um, I can't do that and I won't even try. So what I'm doing is machine the base plate and then solder these parts onto it. The mounting lugs for example, the columns for the crosshead guides and the mounting for the water pump. Moving on to the crankshaft, you can see the flywheel in the middle, you can see the pulley on the side and then you know, a set of pins, eccentrics, the middle shaft of course. This is rather straightforward actually. A whole lot of extra parts, connecting rods, plungers, uh, valve rod, oilers. These are very small and delicate and they have a knurling on the outside. That's going to be fun. And the water pump. A working water pump which is able to fill up the uh, water reservoir in the boiler. The entire valve assembly is a copy I made from the uh, Bing steam engine I own. It's just entirely the same because I didn't want to experiment with uh, stuff here. I just wanted to have something confirmed to work, do the same job here. Again, whole lot of parts with exceptionally tiny dimensions and a whole lot of them. And last not least, the governor. Um, yeah, once again, a <laughs> whole lot of dimensions on exceptionally tiny parts. Uh, it's going to be fun and when I'm done with that I'm going to start making drawings for the uh, boiler and boiler housing. So, this is what you can expect coming up times and times again on this channel making parts for the steam engine. It's going to be all combined in a playlist sometime. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take. 
I guess half a year, a year maybe. Um, I'm not going to do this all day, every day, of course. Uh, I have other projects in the meantime, but I'm going to focus a whole lot of attention on making this thing look and work as good as possible. So stay tuned for it. Um, I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye bye.